Hey guys, Danny here. I wanted to share with you today the Fairies Oracle. This is one that I've been having for quite a while, but I enjoy it so much that I just really wanted to share with you guys um, my review, uh, just in case you were ever on the fence or maybe you have it and you would like somebody else's opinion of it. And just to, um, just to talk about this beautiful and fun deck. So this was done by Brian Froud and Jessica Macbeth. We have here, um, okay, here it is. I was like, oh, where is it at? Um, this was made by Simon and Shuster. I believe I got this at Barnes and Nobles, Books a Million. One of those. I got it at a store. Um, I didn't order it, but I know I think you can order it on Amazon. Um, it's not a super expensive deck, but it is so much fun. Um, I will say that it might not be for everybody, but at the same time, I'm one to study a deck, especially like this. I mean, check out this book. This is like legit. You can see it's been used. I used to keep it with me a lot. Um, and I'm constantly referencing this book because it is so in-depth with each of the cards. Um, there is a upright meaning. There is a reverse meaning. There is a full description about the fairy or entity that is on each card. There's an upright meaning. There's a reversed meaning. There's a little picture of it. There are 65 cards. And everything is based off of Brian Froud's work, which if you've seen any of his fairy books, um, I think he has gnomes and elves and all kinds of stuff. It's beautiful. I love it personally. And so it was a really, really um, exciting thing when I found this Oracle deck um, a couple years ago. So I just kind of wanted to start off by um, talking about the book a little bit. <clears throat> Because it is so big, it's like 200 and something pages, maybe like 200 and 205, and then it's got places for notes if that's something that you do in there. Um, it has um, a little quote from Brian that says, All things absurd, nonlinear, nonsensical, irrational, and madly poetic reveal the secrets of the unconscious and the secret language of fairy. So, and it's got all his little drawings here. Um, a huge book. He does the foreword. There's an introduction. And then it goes into, like, how to communicate with Fae how this is a very different book. It also gives you these steps, which when I first got it, I, I went through the book, I read the book, and I loved how it made you sit with the cards. It was like, um, lay them all out. Pick the one that you're drawn to the most. Pick the one that um, doesn't speak to you the most. Read about them. Um, things like that. It had you really start working and paying attention to the energies that surround this card. Um, or cards that you put that you picked um, it told you how to sit with and work with again the energy of the Fae the energy of these cards and what they could reveal and there's so much information um, in here you guys it's it's a really really good book um, to really sit with these cards you know what I mean most books are general hey this is what it is no big deal like, this is like a legit sit down and read it kind of book, which is rare. I think I've done that for one other deck. One. So that really tells you um, how good this, this book is. Matter of fact, the box, which I don't have anymore. It, like I said, I've been having this for a while. The box um, was huge to fit the book in um, and the card deck, but it was uh, just that. There was no interior box. I have these in a, um, a bag that I keep them in, um, but it's all about this, this book. It's, it's all about it. Uh, what else do they have here? Um, again, Touching Fairy, 
Um, and throughout, there's little um, quotes and stuff from Brian. I believe they're also from his fairy book. So it says here, uh, the wings of flying fairies are symbolic of air and their human or animal legs of earth. A shimmering luminous quality is their fire aspect. The liquid aspect of shape-shifting represents water. Thus, they make a balanced connections among the four earthly elements and the four directions of the mystical winds. To all these, however, they add the magic of moonlight, the fifth fairy element. Um, again, it goes through all these. Uh, reading the cards kind of gives you a... I think about like shuffle them, you know, the basic uh, what to do with oracle cards, what to do with tarot cards. It's kind of the basic thing. Now, I consider these, it's called the Fairy's Oracle, but I really consider it almost to be a tarot of its own, if you can really think about it, um, where everyone is a major arcana. <laughs> you know, I find they're all archetypes. All these fairies. Um, Every single one that they go through, or, or the entities, the fairies, they're all these archetypes. They all have their own personalities. They all speak of something different. Um, and it's all set up, again, these can be reversed. You have here the topsy-turvy on the back. So they're unlike any oracle card I've dealt with. And I don't deal a huge amount in oracle. I, I have a true love for tarot. But I think they're... They're really great. <laughs> they're amazing. I love these. So, um, yeah, I find there there's a lot of depth to them. Um, and I read them more like a, a tarot vibe. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. But that's what I mean. Let's see what else they have here. They have some basic card spreads. The one card, three card. Um, it talks about reverse cards. Um, companions. Uh, different ways to do it. You can arc the cards here and let them guide your hand, if you will. Um, and then they'll introduce certain fairies. I know I'm like, bram, bram, bram. Anyway, this goes through. And like I said, there's plenty to know. You get, again, the fairy. What does it do? What does it stand for? Um all that kind of stuff, then meanings in, in a card read. So there's plenty to read about, but there's more in the back. More in the back, more. So going deeper, preparation, meditation, connecting, centering. It's got it all in here. Reading for others, um, fairy style readings, more spreads plenty of stuff to work with it's it's a good one another little one listen to the voice of the wind in the trees it has a message for you so very much about getting in tune with nature very much about listening and feeling and observing the energies around you so i think that's what makes this book even more so, you know, you get that extra because it really helps connect. You know, especially if you're someone who has trouble getting grounded, has trouble connecting, this really goes through and, and helps you um, with that. So it's worth it. It's worth reading it, you know, with the cards. So with these, your very first card, zero, is your fairy guide. So it's a blank card that you can do whatever you want with. Um, I have not filled it in yet. I'm not, I'm not certain that I will. Um, I've been kind of sitting with it, working with it, um, and I've had these for a long time. So I kind of like the blankness. Um, that really, to me, says open up and listen. So uh, that's a card to have. <laughs> That's the first one in this deck. So I'm, I'm going to go through all the cards um, fairly quickly uh, just to kind of give you a show. You can see the wear on these. 
I've had them from quite a while and I don't know if you subscribe to believing um, that decks have their own personalities but I very much do this deck <laughs> this deck will gladly put you in an awkward situation in my opinion um, I also feel like this deck loves to be used in the fall um, that seems to be when they just jump out at you like the cards will literally as you shuffle just jump out um, they always have a lot to say then so I love working with fate energy around the fall so if you subscribe to the you know the belief that decks have their own personalities this one is super unique super unique um, so it's a lot of fun so we have the entities, I call them first, which are basically like beings of light. We have unity, all these beings of light. Sometimes you can kind of see um, images within them. Now, one thing I will say I have trouble with sometimes, especially at a glance, is the way that the font is is not always easy to read like especially like i said like at a glance there's one <clears throat> if i come across it you know as i go um i'll let you know like i had trouble determining what letter it was so i had to pull up the number in the book they are all numbered so that is helpful when it comes to stuff like that if you can't quite read the the name don't worry they're not in alphabetical order they're in number order and they all i find they flow very well as in like the first are called like the singers so these are these entities of light <clears throat> kind of abstract but you can again make out these shapes and you can see almost like cosmic look to them because of these balls of light that they all have Sometimes a shimmering light. This one's like the chalice. Obviously, you can see that movement there. And then you start coming into the fairies. Oh, Y'all, the maiden. Tell me she's not adorable. This one's definitely reminiscent of the fool. Again, like I said, they're kind of tarot-esque in a way and I love that because this definitely reminds me of the fool and the journeyman does have a lot of that energy and I'll pull a card at the very end and read that way you can um, get a feel for it but some of these like that are coming up have so much going on in the background you can pull intuitively for me I like to I like to kind of keep these for myself because I have such a um, strong relationship with them and I always love to consult the book really dive in um, matter of fact I watched a video with Simon he's at Hermit's Cave I'm gonna try to put a link below to that video where he talked about oh path working I think that's what he called it but I do that with these cards. I just didn't know what it was called. We always learn. I love it. Um, but I love his videos in general. So please go watch him <laughs> anyway. If you love tarot um, and Oracle, he does a ton of stuff and it's really good. But he talked about path working the other day and I was like, I don't know if I've ever done this. And I picked up these cards two days ago and I was like oh my gosh I have I just didn't know what it was called so he talks about path working which is like sitting with this card right and really taking into account what's going on putting yourself there what do you see around what um for me like when I when I would do this with these fairy cards it's like what season am I in how does it feel What's the temperature like? Where can I go? What can I see? What can I do? All within this card, kind of meditating on them, but really like going inside. And you can see there are faces, people, there are fruits. So 
this is a great deck to do that with. The Sage. I love how this kind of reminds me of Odin with like the missing eye. It's got that vibe. The Dark Lady. It does have nudity. If that bothers somebody, that doesn't bother me at all. But some people are offended by it. This might not be the deck for you. <laughs> But just the the characters that he creates, I love. You can really feel their personalities coming through. One of my favorites is the green woman. She just makes me incredibly happy. So again, there's some that are just a single entity, entity like the fairy godmother, the piper, oh, that gnome. But everyone just speaks to, to this realm of fairies, unlike any other one that I've ever seen. But you see, like, just these, like, Penelope Dreamweaver, you can understand and you can go intuitively, but to read about who she is and all of her energy that surrounds her really takes you to the next level. It really dives you deep into this world. And I love how he takes you where sometimes it does. It feels like you're in different seasons, in different light. Earthy and sometimes completely magical. Iris of the Rainbows is another favorite of mine. She's like almost a goddess embodied to me. She's beautiful. And this is fairies of the future, and they're, like, pregnant in some of them. They're all looking different ways. I love it. I love it. But you can see when there's just so much going on in some of these, and yet others are so plain. So I find it's not stagnant like some are. And there are 65 cards, so I'm just kind of flipping through them quickly. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's any amount of time that you can sit with these cards and, and see everything without having them in front of you, to be quite honest. Because I'm already at 19 minutes and I feel like I'm not even halfway there. I mean, I am, but you know. And I love the creatures. And then there's some that almost have a black and white feel, you know? But to me, that takes you to those old magical forests where everything's sort of quiet, you know? This one, I was like, is that an F or is that a T? that a, what was that at first glance that one was hard um I remembered when I saw her I was like wait what does it say what does it say so the font can be hard to read sometimes the oakman very reminiscent of uh lord of the rings to me of the trees alien-esque as well that same realm of fantasy. I think that's why I I was drawn to this deck um, even more so because it does remind me of those fantasy stories that I love so much like Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and stories like that. Death. this dude right here man this is the soul shrinker and like you can just see it he's <sighs> oh sorry i'm like all up in it boom sorry <laughs> Oh, 
again, and it, nobody really looks the same, you know? There's so many different characters. You can really get a feel for who they are individually and not really get them confused with the next. Have the globes here. Choice. And you have the fair share of light and dark fairies, that's for sure. Um, it's not all magic and rainbows. Um, like I said, this one will be, this deck, it will be the first one to put something in your face, you know, that you may not want to talk about, that you may not want to deal with. And it's like, um, yeah, we're going to talk about that right now because that's what's good for you, not what you want. So I really do uh, like to use this deck for shadow work because Fae energy is not scared to tell you uh, what you need to hear. That's for sure. So I'm shuffling right now. Now these are great to shuffle. They are bendy. Do you see? They're super bendy. Um, kind of medium cardstock. They're not too thick, which I'm glad because this is a bigger deck. Um, so if it was super thick, I feel like it would um, it would just make it huge. So it's really good in the hands. Like I said um, in some other videos, I have big hands. But um, if it's comfortable in my hand. Um, against a tarot. Let's see. I'll do my Game of Thrones. That's still on my desk. They're just a little bit bigger. So pretty standard. Not, um, not big by much. I... Um, excuse me. The borders on this one don't bother me. I feel like they fit in. I guess if you really wanted to trim this deck, you could. It doesn't bother me. Um, I never really did. Whereas like some decks, like immediately before we <laughs> before we even discuss it, they come off. You know the. Um, the borders come off. I, I just can't. Um, but for the most part, these don't bother me at all. So, here's our card here. And I'm going to go ahead and read the meaning. So, this is Sylvanas. Truth. Cutting through deception and clarity. So you do have your keywords. Um, Brian called this painting the mask of truth. True dreaming. Sylvanus, who holds the mask of truth, is the lord of the woodlands. His crown of antler branches signifying his authority. I just want you to be able to see that. Before I keep going. He accessed... I'm sorry. <laughs> he presents the mass to us supported by the fairy of aspiration as she welcomes us to our own potential we wear the mass to look inward seeing our true selves not our false and fearful selves but the beings of light that we truly are and what we have the potential to be it becomes very difficult for us to make excuses and blame others for our failures and fears once we have seen what we could be if we were willing what in fact we already are but are not quite living up to. I thought it was very odd that there is a mask of truth. It seemed to me that we use masks to hide the truth rather than to reveal it. Oh no, Sylvanus assured me. First, you put the mask on and hide, and then you take it off to reveal the truth. Very fairy. I see, I said. Not certain I did, but not sure I wanted to either. Besides, Savannah's continued, your face is not your truth. Sometimes faces need to be hidden so truth can be seen. Or sometimes you need to make a crack in the consciousness, an aha moment, in order to see a truth that you have been blind to. From before the time we were born, people have been projecting their ideas, hopes, fears, and confusions on us. As we grow up, we accept many of these untrue projections as our reality, our partly false, partly true picture of ourselves. Brian wrote, The fairy Cundron holds one of the many sacred swords of fairyland. So he 
here. This one, forged long ago by mysterious dwarves, is laid across the cliff of the other world as a bridge to fairyland. The two-edged sword symbolizes the union of the human world with the world of fairy, as well as the union of outer world of nature with the inner world of the psyche. It is the sword of clear cut understanding and sharp perception. But once we cross into fairy, it becomes the world of courage. I'm sorry, it becomes a sword of courage and noble service. So that was their description where um, Jessica speaks of the fact that, you know, she listened to these cards and she listened to the fairy energy and she spoke with the fairies and asked everybody's opinion on them as well as what Brian has said about these fairies in his books. So it kind of comes together to really give you an idea of what's going on. And then they have the starter reading, which says, at this time you are discovering new truths about yourself. They are essential for you to know in order to create relationships based on mutual respect, affection, and trust. These things can only work if we see ourselves and others as we are. Currently, both fairy and this world are functioning as a giant mirror in which we see ourselves in many surprising ways. People tend to dread this because we assume that we are worse than we think we are, but this is far from necessarily true. Now is a time for finding out the false and misleading beliefs you have accepted and discovering that you are a better person than you thought and have the potential to accomplish more than you believed you could. If someone says you are better or simply different than you think you are, don't automatically reject this. Think it over carefully. You have more to give and more to enjoy than you have been giving yourself credit for. Now, the reverse says that um, Sylvanus, Kundrin, and the Fairy of Aspiration have ganged up on you. <laughs> They're ganging up on you. They are creating cracks in your ideas about yourself so that the light may, of truth may shine in. Mirrors jump out of us. Sorry, now, now we're gonna start this. <laughs> Mirrors jump out at us with unexpected reflections. The trick is learning to distinguish the distorted reflections of others, of others' masks of untruth from the clear reflection of the mask of truth. Beware of the reflections that others cast upon you and look within your own truth. Whether someone says, oh, you're so blah, blah, blah. Stop and ask yourself if this is really true. It might just be their stuff, their projections, and have nothing to do with you at all. So you can see uh, that's a good chunk for each card. Each card is like this. So about the fairies, about what's going on, about the reversals. There's a lot. So like I said, these, I feel like I'm constantly learning constantly and things are always shifting and they're very um particular like I'll go I'm like I really just want to use these cards and they'll be like no no like nothing will come out right they won't um answer the questions that I'm posing it's uh, you can tell when it's like it's not time it's not time or you're not grounded or whatever it may be, I find that these are tricky cards. They want what they want. Um, they are very helpful. I find that, again, beyond truthful. Beyond truthful. With what they say, blunt to the point. Um, but when they're not ready, they are super tricky. Super tricky. And they'll come out and you'll be like, I don't get it because you're not supposed to. <laughs> You know, so these, I love the whole vibe, but I find that for me personally, they don't want to be out all the time. They don't want to be used all the time. Now, having said that, I do enjoy taking them out, going through them, reading, pulling a card and reading about who they are. Um... But sometimes when it comes to like actual readings, like I'm going to do a spread to do this. Sometimes they just don't want to do that. Um, but they're just a fun energy to work with. They are um, 
a great quality card. Like I said, I've been using them for a long time. There's some wear and tear, just on the edges mostly is where you'll find it. The cards are not scratching though. Even their backs are pretty good. It's only the edges. Uh, and that's also due to the fact uh, that I shuffle, I rifle shuffle these a lot. So just a really fun deck and I hope you enjoyed this little review and enjoyed seeing this artwork and love it as much as I do. Um, if you like this video, just go ahead and give it a thumbs up or subscribe. I'm constantly putting little things together and you'll be seeing a lot more of me. I'll be doing more deck reviews and all kinds of little things. Um, and you can also find me on Instagram. I'll go ahead and put that below along with the link to um, the path working video that I was talking about and a, um, a link to the fairy's oracle if i can find one I'll, I'll shove that down there as well so thanks again hope you guys have a great rest of your day namaste